This is Billionaire Mondays. Every Monday, we present you with another billionaire. Today, we're looking at 15 Things You Didn't Know About Phil Knight. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello Aluxers and welcome to another exciting original video presented by Alux.com. Today we're going to talk about the man that brought us the sport shoes we all love and want to get more pairs of, Nike. Philip Knight is the co-founder and chairman of the company. Born in Oregon, USA in February 1938, Knight is a well-known American businessman who's also known for his efforts to give back to the institutions that helped him out along the way. Philip Knight graduated from the University of Oregon and Stanford Graduate School of Business. He was a sports lover and even joined the Army before setting his foundations for his new business, Nike. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. But hey, why get lost in the details? Let's just dive into the facts and start telling you the 15 things you didn't know about Phil Knight. Number 1. He founded Nike with his track coach from college. He started his passion for track running with his coach, Bill Bowerman, and they also shared a mutual dislike for the American track shoes available at the time. They started a company in 1964 with the aim to produce a comfortable and light shoe designed by Bowerman himself. They named the company Nike, after the goddess of victory in Greek culture, and they began to sell their shoes in person at different track events in the U.S. As a business major, Phil covered the entrepreneurial and financial aspect of building a company and combined it with the knowledge and experience of Bill, and the two came out with a product that would bring them money and recognition in the long run. Number 2. He started out as an accountant. Before developing his own business, Knight worked as an accountant for Coopers and Lybrand, and then Price Waterhouse. He went on to teach accounting for Portland State University. When he first started to work on his own business, he named it Blue Ribbon Sports, and it took him around a year to get a first sample pair of shoes. As soon as he got the samples, he sent them out to his track professor at the University of Oregon. He was hoping to get his opinion, maybe an endorsement and a sale. He got more than that, as Bowerman wanted to become a partner and contribute with his own designs for track shoes. In January 1964, they shook hands on their partnership and started their business together. Knight actually sold shoes out of his own car at the beginning, but these sales made it possible for him to leave his full-time accounting job and focus on developing Blue Ribbon Sports. Number 3. Phil's first employee came up with the Nike name. Like us, you may have thought that the name of the brand has a deep meaning and comes from the two founders giving it a lot of thought. But it was actually the employee who came up with the name Nike after the well-known Greek goddess of victory. Jeff Johnson was the first employee of the track shoe producing company and the one to come up with the idea of the now iconic name when the team was under pressure of giving their first producers a new name. Knight just came in and told us we needed a name by 9 a.m. because they're making up the shoe boxes. They made the decision to change the name from Blue Ribbon Sports into Nike in 1971. That was a great decision as we couldn't imagine our Nike shoes being called anything else right now. Number 4. He donated over $2 billion to charity so far. Charity work is also something Phil Knight is well known for. Most billionaires like Bill Gates opt to give money out through their foundations and not directly, but Knight decided just to give $2 billion directly to his alma mater, the University of Oregon. His donations went mostly to schools and institutions in Oregon where he lived and studied. He also gave a decent amount of money, $500 million to be exact, to Stanford University, the place where he studied business. He seems to be quite dedicated to giving back to the institutions that helped him get to where he is today, and he indicated he'll be donating approximately $24 billion to the charity in the following years. Number 5. His total net worth is now $32.7 billion, according to Forbes. The founder of Nike, who now occupies the position of chairman of the company after his retirement in 2016, has an approximate fortune of $32.7 billion. He worked 52 years to develop the company that he started when he was in university. The starting capital for what was back then Blue Ribbon Sports had a capital of $1,000. 
Both Knight and his partner Bill Bowerman came up with $500 to start the company. Now, after being renamed Nike, their company has 74,000 employees working in offices in 52 countries. The revenue of Nike amounts to $24 billion, which is quite the growth from the original capital of just $1,000. Number 6. His son died filming a video in Central America. Money unfortunately doesn't assure you'll have a life free from tragedy and sorrow. It can definitely make your life better, but when it comes to tragedies, there's just nothing more you can do to avoid them. Knight lost his son Matthew in an unexpected way back in 2004. Matthew was 34 years old and traveling to El Salvador to film a clip for a fundraiser held by a Portland NGO. He lost his life while suffering a heart attack during a scuba diving experience in Lake Yopango. It was later discovered that the reason behind his death was a congenital heart defect that somehow managed to go undetected all of his life. His father went on to resign as the active CEO of Nike later that year and kept his involvement in the company at the level of chairman. Number 7. He knows Nike lost money supporting golf equipment but still supports Tiger Woods. Producing golf equipment wasn't such a great niche for Nike, as they decided to exit that sector of activity after losing money with the products over 20 years. Knight declared, It's a fairly simple equation that we lost money for 20 years on equipment and balls. We realized next year wasn't going to be any different. Nike entered the golf goods niche after signing a deal with Tiger Woods, but they couldn't predict how far Woods' fame would take their products. It seems not that far as they finally gave up on producing the line. However, with all of this and the scandal surrounding the famous golfer, Nike did continue their $100 million deal with Tiger Woods. Number 8. Nike founded a sustainable company caring for the environment. Nike was hit with a lot of criticism during the early years and on regarding their production of the famous sneakers. A 12-year-old was photographed in 1996 while he was stitching a swoosh logo onto a soccer ball. This started the activists who fought to stop labor abuse as well as environmental abuse. The next year, Nike was hit by a report from Ernst & Young which clearly stated that at least 77% of their factory workers had respiratory problems and they suffered from exposure to carcinogens. They faced their mistake, worked on them and managed to turn things around to the point where today, Nike is recognized as a leader in the matter of sustainability. Number 9. He also owns Leica Stop Motion Animation Studio. Besides being the founder of the giant Nike, Knight also owns an animation studio that specializes in short films, music videos, feature films, and commercial content for the media, called Leica Entertainment. The studio is located in Oregon, and the president of the company is Knight's son Travis. Their studio gathered fame through some of their feature films, like Paranorman, Coraline, The Box Trolls, and so on. These stop-motion features were produced by partnering with Universal Pictures. Travis started to work at Leica as an animator, and years later, after his father decided to buy the financially struggling studio, went on to manage the company. And if you're wondering, yes, the studio was named after the Soviet dog that traveled to space. Number 10. He bought a house for $4.25 million. Having luxurious properties is nothing out of the ordinary when talking about billionaires, and Phil Knight doesn't make the exception. He's the owner of a $4.25 million luxurious mansion located in Riverside, California. The house is on two floors, spans 5,406 square feet, and has a total of five bedrooms, of which the master bedroom is equipped with a huge tub and a fireplace. Knight has also spent quite a lot of money to be the owner of his own hangar for his private jet. The construction cost him $7.6 million, and he's planning to keep his $65 million jet in the new hangar. He actually lets Nike executives use his jet and two other jets that belong to Nike. Quite generous of him, sharing his private jet with others. Number 11. He wrote a book called Shoe Dog. The book describes his journey and what the early days of starting his company were actually like. It's interesting to see what the struggles of a startup were back then and how he managed to get through them. A lot of mistakes and sacrifices were made, and it all indicated that failure was just one step away. He also puts into writing his relationship with his first employees and partners. Nobody actually knew what they were doing, but somehow they stuck together and became close friends. 
Having a sense of the same purpose gave them the power to continue the difficult journey, and they turned the struggling startup into an iconic brand that it is today. Number 12. Nike's newest collaboration is with PlayStation. Nike has had so many collaborations along the years, but the one with PlayStation has been long awaited by fans. They used their collaboration in 2006 as an inspiration and starting point for the new shoe that incorporates a lot of PlayStation details. The shoe is made out of a combination of overlays and leather and actually features PlayStation branding along the heel, the back of the shoe, inside the iconic swoosh, and on the sole of the shoe. PlayStation and Nike shoes cost a total of $200 and were released in June 2018. How do you feel about the collaboration and what came of it? The Air Force One PlayStation 18 QS Kicks. Number 13. Due to political circumstances, Nike had to withdraw Iran's supply of football gear. Politics is always complicated, even when it comes to football. President Trump imposed economic sanctions on Iran after withdrawing from a nuclear deal that had been set between the USA and European allies and Iran. After the news of this hit the country, quite a number of companies decided to suspend their activity in the Middle Eastern country. One of these companies was Nike, who decided to go back on their agreement to supply football boots to the Iranians for the World Cup that took place in Russia. They motivated their decision as a result of the new US sanctions. And this must have hit the Iranian football team as a surprise, as it happened just days before their arrival at the 2018 World Cup in Russia. Number 14. Phil signed Michael Jordan for Nike in 1986, long before he was famous. It seems like Nike owners have a knack for good deals, and the one with Michael Jordan was one of their best deals. Michael was a big fan of Adidas for his NBA games, but was also wearing Converse as his coach had a $10,000 deal with the brand. But having his own shoes was a dream come true, and something that happened before he was even a superstar. Nike took precautions in their contract with Jordan, making it possible for them to withdraw from the contract if it wasn't profitable. However, that didn't happen, because the Jordan brand ended up being extremely profitable and gained a lot of fame between kids of all ages. Air Jordans amounted to 58% of all basketball shoes bought in the USA, and a total of $2.5 billion in retail was made. Number 15. He paid $35 for the famous Nike logo. Don't you sometimes wonder how much these huge brands paid for their logos to be made? And what was the process of coming up with today's most famous brand logos? The creative mind behind the Nike swoosh was a design student, Carolyn Davidson. She designed the logo back in 1971 for only $35 at the time. Phil Knight's first reaction to the logo was, I don't love it, but it'll grow on me. She was later given shares of the company when it went public, and quite an amount of Nike stock to repay the contribution for the now famous brand. You could say this was an unexpected win for Carolyn. And that's all for today, Aluxers. Thanks for being with us. Now, before you go, we're curious. What is your favorite of Nike's lines of track shoes? Is it one of their famous collaboration brands? Let us know in the comments. And as always, since you stuck with us to the end, for being a true Aluxer, you get a bonus fact. Number 16. The famous slogan, Just Do It, is inspired by the serial killer, Gary Gilmore. When you hear someone saying, just do it, you can't help it, your mind goes directly to the swoosh and the Nike brand. But not many people know the true inspiration behind the saying came from the serial killer Gary Gilmore's last words, let's do it. Gary Gilmore became internationally famous after being the first criminal in 10 years that got executed in the US. Inspiration comes from the weirdest places, and this one was a weird way for Dan Whedon of the advertising agency Whedon & Kennedy to come up with a slogan that would represent the brand starting from 1988. Does this information change your feelings towards the famous slogan? It's kind of creepy. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxer. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you want more, we handpicked these videos you might enjoy, or head over to alux.com for the best in fine living content on the planet. Be a part of the largest community of luxury enthusiasts in the world and tell your story.